My scary experience with a witch's coven. This happened to me. They say the devil dances with those who summon him, but I didn't expect to be invited to the ball. When I found myself face to face with a witch's coven deep in the woods, the chilling air was thick with a foreboding sense of doom. The sight of their black robes fluttering like restless shadows around a flickering bonfire felt like stepping into a nightmare. A nightmare that was far too real. My hands shook, not just from the cold but from the unsettling realization that these women, no, these witches, were not just playing dress up for a Halloween party. Their chants echoed through the trees, each word seemingly older than time itself, vibrating with an eerie power that made my skin crawl. The leader, a woman whose eyes burned with an unnatural light, approached me with a sinister smile. You've come at the perfect time, she whispered, her voice dripping with a strange mix of menace and delight. The flames cast long, twisted shadows on the ground as if the very earth recoiled from the dark magic they were conjuring. At that moment, I realized this was no ordinary gathering of eccentric hobbyists. These were practitioners of a craft as ancient as fear itself, and they were welcoming me into their fold, whether I wanted to be there or not. I never expected that my investigative journey would lead me to the heart of a witch's coven. Yes, you heard that right. For years, I've uncovered hidden truths and exposed dark secrets, but nothing prepared me for the eerie events I would encounter during this investigation. This time, the shadows I chased were not just metaphorical. They were very real, and they wore pointed hats. In this report, I'll take you through the twisted path that led me to a remote, fog-drenched forest where I stumbled upon a gathering of witches practicing their ancient, forbidden craft. What started as a simple inquiry into local legends quickly spiraled into a nightmarish ordeal that still sends shivers down my spine. From cryptic symbols carved into trees to strange, echoing chants that seemed to come from the very ground beneath my feet, the experience was nothing short of chilling. But don't worry, a coven of witches isn't exactly a model of modern efficiency, as I quickly found out. So, if you think witchcraft is all about cackling old hags and bubbling cauldrons, you're in for a surprise. Let's dive into the nightmarish world of dark magic, where the line between the absurd and the terrifying is as thin as a wisp of smoke. It all started with a simple question. What's the truth behind modern-day witchcraft? I've explored some of the world's most elusive mysteries, but the idea of witches in the 21st century seemed like a challenge worth pursuing. The covens of old had long since retired their brooms and cauldrons, replaced by online communities swapping recipes for herbal teas. But as it turns out, my curiosity was about to lead me into a far darker and far more bizarre world than I could have imagined. The first challenge was locating an actual coven. After all, it's not like witches advertise on the YouTube pages. My inquiries led me to a series of cryptic forums and dubious online groups where the language of spellcasting and potion brewing flowed more freely than I anticipated. Before I knew it, I was deep in a conversation with someone who claimed to be the high priestess of the midnight flame. Skeptical yet intrigued, I accepted an invitation to witness a gathering in a secluded forest. A decision that, in hindsight, felt like agreeing to play a leading role in a horror movie. But the real challenge began once I arrived at the so-called gathering. The journey to the meeting spot was treacherous enough. Navigating narrow, winding roads that seemed to disappear into the mist, all while questioning my life choices. When I finally reached the location, I was greeted not by a friendly welcome committee, but by a series of strange, unsettling rituals that quickly dispelled any notion of this being a harmless social club. As I stood there, Surrounded by chanting figures in the flickering firelight, it became clear that this was no mere costume party. The air was thick with tension, and the uneasy feeling that I had crossed a line I couldn't uncross. The high priestess wasn't just playing dress up. She was leading her followers through a ritual that felt more ancient than the forest itself. My initial curiosity had opened a door to something far more dangerous, and as I stood there, struggling to keep my composure, I realized I had no idea how, or if, I would get out of this alive. As I ventured deeper into the coven's world, the line between reality and the surreal began to blur in unsettling ways. The night started innocently enough, 
if you can call following cryptic directions into the middle of nowhere innocent. I arrived at a clearing, the only light coming from a towering bonfire that crackled ominously at the center. Around it, a circle of women dressed in black robes moved in a synchronized rhythm, their faces obscured by hoods. If I hadn't known better, I'd have thought I'd wandered onto the set of a low-budget horror film. The high priestess, the woman who had initially invited me, approached with a grin that seemed more fitting for a wolf than a human. She introduced me to her sisters, each with a name more fantastical than the last. Mistress of the Shadows, Keeper of the Abyss, and, my personal favorite, Bringer of the Twilight. They spoke in a peculiar mix of Old English and what I can only describe as over-the-top dramatic flair, as if they just stepped out of a Shakespearean tragedy. Yet, there was a seriousness in their eyes that told me this was no performance. As the ritual progressed, the atmosphere grew heavier, almost suffocating. The chanting reached a fever pitch, and strange symbols began to glow around the clearing. It was as if the very ground was coming alive, responding to their words. I kept waiting for someone to break character, for the punchline of what felt like an elaborate joke. But the punchline never came. Instead, I was handed a goblet filled with a thick, dark liquid that I could only assume was some sort of potion. My stomach churned as I lifted it to my lips, the taste somewhere between burnt herbs and regret. The most unsettling part, however, was the way the forest itself seemed to react. The trees creaked and groaned as if whispering secrets, and the wind carried an almost human-like moan through the branches. At one point, I swear I saw something, a shadow, a figure, lurking just beyond the firelight watching us. When I tried to focus on it, it disappeared, leaving me questioning whether I'd seen anything at all. As the night wore on, the coven's rituals became more intense. One moment, they were casting what appeared to be harmless spells for prosperity and protection. The next, they were invoking names I had never heard, names that sent shivers down my spine. And then there was the laughter, low, sinister chuckles that echoed through the trees, sending a chill straight to my bones. At one point, the high priestess turned to me with that same predatory smile and asked, Are you ready to join us? It was then that I realized this was more than just an investigation. I wasn't just an observer anymore. I was becoming a part of the very thing I had come to expose. The longer I stayed, the harder it became to distinguish between the witch's strange, ancient rituals and the growing sense that something truly unnatural was at play. The line between reporter and participant was thinning, and I couldn't shake the feeling that once it was crossed, there would be no going back. The night reached its terrifying peak when the high priestess led me to the center of the circle, where the bonfire blazed with an almost unnatural intensity. The flames seemed to dance higher, twisting into shapes that were disturbingly human. The chanting grew louder, more frenzied as if the very air around us was being torn apart by their words. I could feel the heat on my skin, but there was something else too, an icy dread creeping up my spine, as if I was standing on the edge of a cliff, about to be pushed off. That's when the high priestess raised a wickedly sharp dagger, its blade catching the firelight in a way that made it gleam with a menacing brilliance. She held it above her head, and the chanting abruptly stopped, plunging the forest into an eerie silence that was almost deafening. I could feel every eye on me, the weight of their gaze as heavy as the blade itself. For a moment, the world seemed to pause, as if waiting to see what would happen next. Then, with a voice that dripped with ritualistic fervor, the high priestess declared, The time has come for the final sacrifice. My heart pounded in my chest as I realized what she meant. Sacrifice? I thought as panic surged through me. Surely this was just part of the show, another one of their theatrical displays of dark mysticism. But the look in her eyes told a different story. A story where I was the unwitting protagonist facing an untimely end. As she began to lower the dagger, everything seemed to move in slow motion. The flames roared higher, the shadows around us seemed to close in and that strange figure I had glimpsed earlier reappeared at the edge of the clearing, watching intently. Was this my final moment? Was I about to become a footnote in a bizarre story about witches and their gruesome rituals? Just as the blade neared my throat, there was a sudden commotion from the trees. 
a loud crash, followed by the sound of something large barreling through the underbrush. The witch's heads snapped toward the noise, their focus momentarily broken. Seizing the opportunity, I stumbled backward, my heart racing as I tried to put as much distance between myself and the ritual as possible. The high priestess hesitated for just a second, her eyes narrowing as she gauged the situation. Then, with a frustrated snarl, she barked out an order in that strange, ancient tongue. The other witches immediately scattered, their figures melting into the darkness as if they were part of it. The ritual was over, but the terror it invoked lingered in the air, hanging over the clearing like a dark cloud. In that chaotic moment, everything changed. What had started as an investigation had turned into a desperate bid for survival. The witches had shown their true faces, and I was left with the chilling realization that I had barely escaped becoming a part of their twisted ceremony. As I stumbled out of that haunted forest, the echoes of that night stayed with me, long after the chanting had faded and the flames had died down. I'd gone in search of the truth behind witchcraft, and what I found was a terrifying reminder that some mysteries are better left unsolved. The experience had a profound impact on me as a person who now has a healthy respect for the dark corners of the world where things that shouldn't exist still thrive. I learned that curiosity can lead you down paths you never intended to walk. In this case, it took me straight into the heart of something ancient and sinister. The coven was not just a gathering of eccentric women playing at witchcraft. They were the real deal, practicing a craft as old as fear itself. The chilling intensity of their rituals, the way the forest seemed to come alive around them, and the very real threat that hung in the air, all of it shattered any preconceptions I had about modern-day witches. But perhaps the most important lesson I took away from this harrowing experience is the power of belief. These women believed in their rituals, their spells, and their ancient rites, and that belief had a palpable force. Whether it was the power of their faith or something darker that gave their rituals such intensity, I'll never know. What I do know is that I came far too close to becoming a permanent part of their dark world. In the end, I survived, but I left a piece of myself in that clearing. Perhaps my naivety, perhaps my sense of invulnerability. I returned to the world of the mundane, forever changed by the night I spent among witches. The experience taught me that not all stories are meant to be told, and not all doors should be opened. And while I've walked away with a tale to tell, it's one that still sends shivers down my spine whenever I think about how close I came to becoming a sacrifice in a ritual older than civilization itself. So, what did I learn? That curiosity, while essential for any investigator, can sometimes lead you straight into the jaws of something you're not prepared to face. And that witches, whether you believe in them or not, are out there, waiting in the shadows, ready to remind you that some legends are terrifyingly real. Share your own spooky experiences in the comments below. I'm eager to hear if anyone else has come face to face with something as unsettling as a real life coven. And if you enjoyed this eerie journey into the unknown, don't forget to check out my other videos for more thrilling stories and bizarre investigations. There's plenty more where this came from, and who knows what other dark secrets we might uncover together. Hit that subscribe button and join me as we continue to explore the shadows of the world.